You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances that you can't get through. Right now it seems that there's no way out. You're going under. Oh, but God's proven time and time again. He's going to take care of you. And he'll do it again. Yes, he'll do it again. If you'll just take a look at where you are now and where you've been, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. the things you're going through and he knows how you're hurting you see he knows just how your heart has been broken in two but he's the God of the stars of the sun and the moon and he is your father yes he is and he can calm every storm and he'll find a way to fix this for you yes he will he'll do it again If you'll just take a look at where you are now and where you've been, well, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. do it again oh he's still God and he will not fail you yes he's still God he'll never change Just like Daniel, just like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Yes, he'll do it again. If you'll just take a look at where you are now and where you And he always come through for you. He's the same now 
as this. Oh, you may not know how, you may not know when, but you'll do it again. Oh, you may not know how, and you may not know when. Oh, you may not know how, you may not know when, but you'll do it again Hallelujah Hallelujah All right girls you can't run forever where are you hiding Ah uh -huh. uh, did they oh did they lock out of the room Oh all right girls and they've been working on a song together if you know it, you can sing along. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all strength I will love the Lord with 
soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. And if you want to stand, you can stand. If you don't, that's fine. <laughs> you heard no tone in that at all. <laughs> Just a joke. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord had made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his courts with praise. And I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad made me glad he has made me glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad hallelujah yes hallelujah what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve angels bow for him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God we serve! Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve! Boy, y'all sound good. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, hallelujah, yes, it says in his word that God inhabits the praises of his people Hallelujah. and I think he is pretty happy tonight I believe it y'all's pray the praise sounds beautiful the worship um, we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him it's while we're here right we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him hallelujah we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship christ our lord 
and concentrate on him and worship him hallelujah yes so forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him hallelujah yes so Concentrate on Him and worship Christ our Lord. Worship Him, Jesus Christ our Lord. So just lift up holy hands and magnify His name. Lift up holy hands. Magnify his name and worship him. You're worthy, Lord. So full of lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. So Christ, our Lord. He is all my righteousness, so I stand complete in him. He's all my righteousness, and I stand complete in him and worship him. Yes, hallelujah. He is all my righteousness. So I stand complete in Him and worship Him. He is all my righteousness. So I stand complete in Him and worship Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord, let us worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord, let us worship Him. Jesus Christ, our Lord. To me, He is so wonderful. To me, Jesus, 
Because he first, because he first, oh, because he first loved me. song tonight amen boy y'all are sounding good out there too yes. praise the lord i i think um you know uh, when two or more are gathered together in his name he's there in the midst and, and if you can't tell the lord's here with us tonight you need to have a heart check i hope your heart's prepared i hope your heart's tender i hope your heart's ready for what god has prepared um, i'm excited for brother eric to come he's a good friend of mine you know, a lot of times when you do this part, you have um, you give the pedigree of the pastor, the preacher that's coming. Um, I'll tell you this: the guy coming right now loves the Lord. <laughs> we have some of the sweetest fellowship. We're not just neighbors; we're good friends. We're brothers in Christ, and man, we've laughed together, we've cried together, we've prayed together, we've we've um, studied the scriptures together on many, many occasions. He was a youth pastor for around 10 years. And, you know, he makes a, a little circuit and he comes to see us about once a month when he can. And um, I'm excited to hear him preach. I've heard him, um, I've heard him in a Bible study on a number of times, but looking forward to hearing him preach the Word of God tonight. So, Brother Eric, come on now. And... Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. He is so good. If he's been good to you, let's do it one more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. He's good. Sister Melissa, don't go anywhere if you please. <laughs> it's nice to have an a anointed music minister just playing, and I appreciate the anointing and the ministry God has for you to lead this church and congregation of worship like you do every Sunday morning. So Thank you for what you do. Amen. I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah, everybody works so hard making this happen. The decoration, the stage, the tent, the chairs. A lot of work went into it, and I just got to see a fraction of it. Just get to see a fraction of it. I got to ride with Ken yesterday. and uh, Okay. So anyway, no, I'll joke. I'll joke. Yeah. yeah, he told, told me yesterday, so you're preaching tomorrow. I'm like, oh. he's like, we're going to see what you're made of. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. 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 I just want to say uh, thank you to my friends and ministry partners who are here. I want to say thank you to Stanfield, 
Baptist congregation that's here, you know, and just excited with expectation as to what God is going to do tonight and throughout this week. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. It's awesome just to be with you guys. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, uh, these are my mother, my brothers, and my sisters, they that do the will of God. Amen. Say amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, so there's a few things we want to do tonight and everything. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be awesome. Amen. We're going to get excited about the Lord. Not our, you already aren't, but you, I knew we're going to get even more so. Uh, but there is something that the Lord, the Holy Spirit put on my heart when I was, um, uh, man, it was about two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, uh, something that not only I was just thinking about Pastor Kevin and his family, and uh, we're going to embarrass you just for a second, if that's okay. I'm not going to look in his direction because I don't want to hear him say no. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of you, I don't have to tell you what a gem of a pastor and his family you have. Um, he is absolutely uh, beautiful and anointed in him and his family. Um, he uh, is a beautiful teacher of theology, a wonderful wonderful preacher of the gospel, and he, I, I'm going to probably start calling him Kevin the Baptist, uh, just <laughs> because what he'll do is he'll say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and he'll expect you not to follow him, but to follow him, just like John the Baptist did where his disciples got up and they went after Christ. That's what puts joy in his heart to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And, um, uh, this is a little unorthodox, but please just bear with me just for a second. Does this work? Thank you. All right, so we're going to flip the switch. But one thing I want is, if Pastor Kevin, if you will just come stand right here. Um, I start asking the Lord, you know, uh, what is there I could say about Pastor Kevin? And it's amazing how God is always speaking if we're just listening. And the very first thing was Second Corinthians chapter 4. So what I would like, if you can just stand right here, face me. This is not a ritual. Okay, <laughs> just stand right here. You can look at the ground because we're going to pray. But also, I would just love some men of God in this church who actually love this man and love his family to come up here right now, be bold and stand up. Please, thank you. Luke, please, if you will. Greg, Doug Jones, uh, the funny man over there who likes to crack jokes while we work. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm sorry if I don't know your name specifically. I apologize, I'm still getting used, but if, if you can, come up, surround this man. I'm gonna speak these scriptures the Holy Spirit put in my heart over him and his family. And then right afterwards, right afterwards, I'm going to hand this mic off to Mr. Ken here, and I would love you to pray over him. That's okay. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Seeing that we have this ministry and we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully. But by the manifestation of truth, we have commended ourselves to every man's consciousness in the sight of God, and the gospel be hid. It's hid to them that are lost, for the God of this world has blinded the minds who believe not, lest that the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Amen? That's what he's doing right now, him and his family ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine in the darkness has shined in our hearts that we may give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this excellency, this, this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of the power will be of God and not us. For we are surrounded on every side, troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We're perplexed, but we're not despaired. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Christ may be manifested in our body. Amen. So this is all this is for your sakes, that the his abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. So for this cause, once again, 
we faint not for the outward man perish, but the inward man was renewed day by day. And this light affliction is just but for a moment. But if worketh a far more eternal and exceeding weight of glory, for we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. As men of God, as men of God right now, we just want to, I want to say, I commend you to pray for him, pray for him, and protect him. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, once again, for all of your glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and for this church. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Kevin as he's come to lead this, lead this flock just like you would lead the sheep. We thank you for him and we ask you, Lord, guide him and direct him in the path that you would have him walk and let us follow in that same path and guide and protect all of us as we do though. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you for all that you do for us. We're so thankful that you sent Brother Kevin to us, Lord. We pray that you lift him up, Lord, lead and guide him, help him to be wise in all that he does here at this church and that we might do the same, Lord. We ask you to protect him and his family. Uh, Lord, help them in each and every day and, and watch them, protect them. And Lord, uh, most of all, just uh, help him to portray the love that you know that uh, you want him to, to others, and that they might come to know Christ as their Savior. We love you, Lord, and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for Pastor Kevin and what he means to us. Lord, we ask that you give him the words to speak. God, just give him the strength to lead us. God, open our hearts and our minds to your words as you give them to him to bring to us. God, we ask your blessing on this week. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds to your word this week and fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just... Thank you for this church. Thank you for leading Brother Kevin here. Lord, and I just pray you guide and hand upon him, give him wisdom, discernment, Lord, that he would follow you and all that he speaks would be from your word, Lord, the truth that he has so far. And Father, I just lift him up to you and pray that you'd guide him and direct him and guide us, Lord, that we may follow you in Christ's name only. Now let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise God. That's awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for your love for him and his family, and above all, your love for the Lord. Praise God. It's awesome to step into a place and feel God's anointing, to feel the excitement of the expectation of his people. I thank God for that. Uh, the other thing I like to do, whenever uh, I was uh, offered a chance to minister, and you know, and I told my family, my kids got all excited because when they know that I minister in the past, my kids always got a chance. <laughs> so you know, and praise God that you know when you you know your kids get excited about the word and the ministration of the word, and they're just like they hear that oh, daddy's preaching. That means I get to come up here and just minister to the people. That's awesome. So I cannot deny the anointing that's on my kids lives and that's the Caitlin and Brenna praise the Lord for what y'all did tonight thank you Jesus and come on Gabriel and Paisley come on up real quick praise the Lord so Paisley would like to sing a little song that she actually just wrote this week if that's okay and uh, it's a really short song because she just started this week and then they would like to sing a song together here why don't y'all stand right over here so there's no feedback with the mic 
When I believe in you, I can see your face, or I hear with you in your embrace. When I believe in you in God's holy grace, or I hear with you in this holy place, there's nowhere else I would rather be. Just right here, you and me. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, go ahead and sing y'all song together. Just, just with the same mic will be fine. When I was just a little child, no higher than your knees, my mother bought a box of crayons just for me. I picked them up, I opened them up, and I looked way down inside. And the colors, they reminded me of Jesus when he died. Oh, red is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of forms that laid upon his head. Blue is it's for royalty in heaven, they just dwell. It yells for the Christian that's afraid to tell. I colored and I colored till crayons were all gone. And so I am a daughter now that memory lingers on. And when I see a little child with crayon box in hand, I tell them what they mean to me and hope they understand. All right, is the color of the blood that he shed. Brown is for the crown of thorns that laid upon his head. Blue is for royalty in heaven, they judge well. And yellow is for the Christian that's afraid to tell. And don't you be a Christian that's afraid to tell. Amen. <laughs> All right. This is their chance for the ministration of the word. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and all today and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Romans 1.16 and 17 I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who Bullies, and first unto the Jew and then unto the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For is written, the just shall live by faith. Mark 16, 15. Jesus said unto them, Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. John eleven twenty five. Jesus said unto her, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth shall never die. John fourteen six. Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. John four. 18 there there's, There's no, no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Philippians 4.13, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Psalms 51, Paisley. Create in me, O God, a clean heart, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then when I teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Good. Moses, what did Moses say, Gabriel? Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, that the Lord will show to you today. For the enemy whom you have seen today, you shall see him again no more forever. The Lord fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Good. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside still waters. He restoring my soul. He leading me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, for I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. She shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good. What does the Bible say about trusting the Lord? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understandings, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall wretch your path. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, lastly but not least. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels and have not love, I become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I, so I cannot move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient and is kind, and love and be not. Love wanting not itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, they shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Now as a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I fought as a child. But when I came a man, I put away child's things. For now we see for a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also as I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, and love. These friends, the greatest of these is love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. Covet the best gifts earnestly, but I show you a more excellent way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love, love, love. That is the greatest and foundational revelation is the love of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. There's no greater revelation to understand the love of our Father that he gave in giving his son for us, for the propitiation of our sins. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's awesome. So, you know, when, uh, you know, uh, 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 Paul said in Romans 8, he said, we're saved by hope. And if hope is seen, then it's not yet hope. Man, it makes sense to me. And who's our hope in? It's Christ Jesus, the Lord. He's the hope of glory in us. Amen. So how do we increase that hope? Well, I'll tell you, increase your faith. Amen. You see, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what increases your hope is actually faith because it fuels that hope. So what, how do you increase your faith? Amen? How do you increase it? See, faith that worketh by love. Amen? That is the greatest revelation. I mean, love, love, love. Uh, now abide at these three, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen? Amen. There's no greater revelation. Amen. And so we understand that the greatest and first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Amen. And the second greatest commandment is like it to the first, that you love your neighbor as you would yourself. And these the two commandments do hang the law and the prophets. But then Jesus said a new commandment, something that's never been heard of. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and by this shall the world know that you are my disciples. Amen? Amen. Amen. He said, um, he said uh, uh, as the Father loves me, so I love you. Continue in my love. You keep my commandments, you abide in my love as I have kept the Father's commandments, and abide in his love. A new commandment I give unto you. Amen. Now, how many of us understand that in order for the second greatest commandment to flow freely from our lives and ministry and family, that we have to have the first and greatest commandment accomplished and fulfilled in us? And that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Why is this? Because to have and understand to love God right, what this will do is that it will allow you to love yourself right. Because now you can see yourself right in the eyes of God. And which thus allows you to love your neighbor right. See, loving God right allows you to see yourself right in the identity of Christ. Having the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, the spirit of Christ. To be identified right with Christ. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. For I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Amen. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He also says it again in Colossians chapter 1 that he is the image of the invisible God. Amen. Amen. 
So when we see him, he's reflecting the Father. He's showing us the Father. He's in the image of the Father. Praise God. And the Father is manifesting himself through the Son. He's revealing himself. John chapter 1 verse 18. This is a book that was written around 30 to 40 years after Jesus lived, died, and rose again and ascended to the right hand of the Father. And John's still saying no man has seen God at any time. Amen? No man. But the son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Praise God. Another word for that same word, uh, Greek word for declare says to unfold, meaning to reveal. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has always been unfolding, revealing, declaring the father and the father manifesting himself through the son. And the Old Testament is Yahweh. And now we see a greater revelation in the New Testament. Praise God. And he shows us the Father, and now we in turn need to show the world the Son who is showing us the Father. Amen? Amen. Why and how is that we are conformed to the image of his Son that he may be the firstborn of many brethren. And we show forth Christ to a dead, diseased, dark world. Amen. We show them as the light of God shining through us, in us, and all around us in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And when they see us, they don't see us. They see the body of Christ. When they see us, they don't see us, but they see Christ in us, the hope of glory. And now that we love God right, we can love ourselves right because we see ourselves right. And now thus we can love our neighbor correctly whether they be a friend that walk with us through life or an enemy that crucifies us to the cross. And we say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Amen. See, having the first and greatest commandment flowing freely within us allows us to have the second greatest commandment flowing freely from our lives and from our hearts. And now we can understand how we can become a conduit for the riches of his glory, a portal for the beauty of his holiness, a gateway for his divine nature how we could become witnesses and testimonies and living epistles known and read of all men. Amen. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone, but on the fleshly tables of our heart. And such trust have, such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves, for our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but it's of our God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not by the letter, but by the spirit, for the letter kill it, but the spirit giveth life. Praise God. Now that we can have the first and greatest commandment, thank you all girls again for singing that song on the first and greatest commandment, accomplished in our hearts and our lives, now it allows us to be the conduits of God's love flowing freely within us and through us to this world. Now we can understand the revelation of a new commandment. I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. And now we can manifest and witness God's love to this world because God so loved the world world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him though he uh, shall not perish but have everlasting life the kids there a better job on that scripture than I did amen right how did the old testament witness of faith how were they witnesses that there is a God in Israel how were they witnesses of God's word and his divine plan they conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, through weakness or were made strong, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. Amen? Right. Others received back their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, not accepting their release, that they might obtain a better, a better resurrection. Some experienced mockings, discouragings, and yes, chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, and they were tempted. They were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and ill-treated, people of whom this world was not worthy. Hebrews chapter 11. Wandering about in mountains and deserts and caves and holes in the ground. And what is it we can say of these people that the world was not worthy? See, these having gained approval through their faith did not receive what was promised because God has provided something better for us that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. They would not be the culmination and the completion of the church from when Adam fell and faith first began. That has been given to you and to me. That has been given to us to manifest to this world that there is still a God in Israel. 
that have manifest and witnessed God's holy word, his divine plan. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. For it is your reasonable service, meaning it's the least you can do. Your reasonable service. And be not conformed unto this world, but be ye transformed through the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. We are here to manifest the love of God in this reign of grace as New Testament witnesses of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And it's time for the church to stop pressing the snooze button on the alarm clock and to be overcomers and more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who loves us. To deny ourselves to pick up our cross and follow him. To overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony because we love not our lives unto death. Amen? To the overcomer I will get with him to give to him to sit with me in my throne. It's been given to me to sit with my father in his throne. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto those that are thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. We are here to be witnesses as the body of Christ. We are here to be witnesses as his beloved. We are here to be witnesses as the bride. We are the church. We are the Christians. We are the little Christ-like ones. Amen? We are the children of God and they're here to be the sons of God. What does it mean to be the sons of God? They who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Amen? For we have not received the spirit of bondage again into fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, as Jesus cried, Abba, Father, Daddy, in the Garden of Seventy. Now we can through the blood of Jesus. Amen? For the Spirit spirits with him with my spirit that we are the children of God. Amen? And if we're the children of God, then we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, being that we're willing to suffer with him, that we be glorified together with him. And I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us, the sons of God, the bride church. Amen? Amen. And guess what? The earnest expectation of creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting on you. And they're waiting on me to rise up as the remnant of his seed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's time that we go forth in that. It's time to rise up in that. Amen. It says in John chapter 1, he says, As to many as received them, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who are born not of blood, not the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but they're born of God. Amen? John, 1 John chapter 3, he says, Oh, what love has the Father bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of God. I'll tell you what love, amen? He says, because God commended his love towards us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And it says the world doesn't know us because it knew him not. But it says now, beloved, See, there was one time one was called beloved, for he says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And because of what he did, how he lived, died, and rose again, now we are called beloved. Now, beloved, we are the sons of God. And it doesn't appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that's going to be a glorious day, amen? The heavens shall open and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He's clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a two-edged sword that with it he should smite the nations and rule them with a rod of iron, for he treaded the winepress of the fierce and the wrath of the Almighty God. And he had a name written on his vesture and on his thigh. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. There's no name under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. For God has given him a name. Amen. God has given him a name that at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and earth and underneath the earth shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever to the glory of God the Father. That's why we give glory to Jesus because when you give glory to Jesus, you give glory to the Father. 
Amen. Amen. Now let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a glorious day that will be. When he shall descend with the shout of the archangel and the trump of God. And the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. And they who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air and the clouds. And so shall we forever be with our Lord. What a glorious day that will be when Jesus Christ is coming back again in all his glory. And every eye shall see him on that day. And he'll gather us up and bring us on into eternity and glory with the Father. But we've got work to do till then. And that is to be conformed to the image of his Son. That he may be the firstborn of many brethren. Because when I tell you right now, when there comes a confirmation, there comes a confirmation, amen, of God's power upon your life. Praise God, hallelujah. Jesus, yes, he came to live, die, and rise again that you may be saved as sinners. Amen, for his name shall be called Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. But he didn't come just to save you as sinners. He came to save you to becoming the saints and the sons of God, to invade this earth with the love of God in your heart. Amen? Amen. To get beyond the four walls of this church. It's a man-made notion, going to church, when it was always destined to be that we are the church amen amen and in that revelation we are to rise up for he says uh, uh, flesh and blood is not given this unto you peter what what revelation that he is the christ the son of the living god flesh and blood is not revealed this unto you father but my uh, peter but my father which is in heaven and i say unto you thou shalt be called peter and upon this rock i shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it then I shall give you the keys to the kingdom of God. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. That's for you. That's for me. Knowing that we have a revelation that this church is built on. And it's not Peter. It's that he is the Christ. The son of the living God. The Messiah has come. God's love has come. And now it's still going forth with Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. And we need to grow and mature in that. We need to. We need to, uh, to rise to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We need to leave the things that are behind and reach for the things that are before and press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We need to be able to go faith to faith and glory to glory and grace for grace as John put in John chapter 1. It says, what, what did the kids say? They said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation everyone who believes first to the Jew and then to the Greek. There's your salvation for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Increase your faith by increasing love. Increase your hope by increasing faith. Increase it all by increasing your, uh, his presence and Christ in you. Get him deeper into his word, deeper into prayer, deeper into worship, deeper into the calling God has for you as the church. Amen? Amen. We with open faith not be holding in the glass the glory of the Lord. We're changed into the very same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of the Lord. His Holy Spirit is working on us, molding us and making us to be conformed into the image of His Son. Surrender to it. Amen? We don't need a mosey around in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen? We can cross the River Jordan now if we'll look over there with vision and say we can take the land. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, we are destined to have a face-to-face -face relationship. Think of Paul. Paul, he talks about, he was kind of, things referring to himself, and I agree, to that he was caught up to the third heaven, he heard things. He heard things that he wasn't able to speak again. John heard about what? The seven spirits and the, the seven, last seven years, and you know, he heard about the seven vials and the seven trumpets, and so you know, see all this. But then the seven thunders, and God said, Don't say anything. That's between you and me. Wouldn't that be awesome to have that kind of relationship with God? That God, you're just talking with Him, and y'all one together, communing together, grow, you're growing in Him, and that God's telling you things that, wait a minute, this is you and me. This is for you and me. Now go preach the gospel, but this right here. Amen. That's awesome, huh? Yeah. And God wants that for you. 
we read about these men is because they did it, <laughs> right? We hear about these men and women because they did it, but it wasn't just for them, and it wasn't just for them. It's for you because that's what the blood paid for. That's what the blood, and he wants you to go the distance, to contend for the faith, as you said, to fight the good fight of faith, to uh, uh, run and not be weary, to walk and not faint, to wait upon the Lord, to renew your strength, to fly with the wings of eagles. He wants that for you. To war a good warfare in Jesus Christ as good soldiers of Christ. Amen. But you don't know what I've done. Ephesians chapter 2. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> You whom he hath quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Whereby in times past we walked in accordance to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. Whereby we have all in times past have conversations with in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature called the children of wrath, even as others. There is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, even Mary. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, he has quickened us together in Christ Jesus. In who? In who? In Christ Jesus, for by grace you are saved. And he has raised us up together and seated us in heavenly places with who? Christ Jesus. Amen. That in ages to come, that he may show his exceeding greatness and his kindness towards us. Through who? Yeah, for by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. By faith, not of yourselves, for it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship, creating in who? Christ Jesus. Yes, Christ Jesus, unto good works that God has before ordained that we should walk in them. It's all through Christ. Increased Christ Jesus in your heart and in your life. Go the distance that the blood paid for. Surrender to the Holy Spirit and let him lead you and guide you. Live, move, and have your being in him. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh of the world or the things of Satan, but grow in his righteousness. Grow in his holiness. Grow in faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen? Walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen? But what about what I've been through? Well, what about what he's been through? When does what he's been through have a voice? When does what he's been through speak louder than what you've been through? When does his story supersede your story? When does his story become your story? Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you this, all things work to the good of them who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And I have not seen, ear have not heard, nor entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But it's revealed by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Amen. 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 Guess what? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not here to drag it out. The Holy Spirit has put out the call. You don't have to make a show of it, but I do want you to know that with every head lifted up and every eye looking around, if you can't profess him before your brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't see how you're going to get out there and do it. Amen? But I want to say, I want to open it up to those who don't know Christ or who want to rededicate their lives and just go after him with everything they've got everything they've got and say I'm going to do it right this time I was saved yeah but I want to go higher I want to fly higher I want to swim deeper I want to run further than I've ever been he'll take you all the way even like Paul to a third heaven even like John to a place where you're going to have a conversation and he'll say hey about this part don't talk about that amen God has that for you he has that for you if you're listening and if you want it. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you like a hen does gather her chicks, but you would not. The only thing that separates you from the fullness of what the blood paid for is you. Amen? Amen. 
And for those that already know Jesus and are saved and they love God, put yourself to the test like this. Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, does I love me? You know all things, Lord. Feed my lambs. So it's not just about the big ones too, is it? <laughs> Peter, does I love me? You know all things, Lord. You know I love you. And feed my sheep. Because I'm telling you right now, some will bring in 30-fold and some will bring in 60-fold. But then there's going to be that beautiful few that's going to bring in 100-fold. <laughs> Amen. And is that, you want that? Is that you? Amen. There, uh, I'm not saying we're not gold here. If you're under the blood of Christ, may wash pure, clean, and white as snow. You're gold. But then there are those that are 12 carat, some that are 14 carat, some that are 18 carat. But man, what about those that are 24 carat? That's the greatest conductor conducting metal we have on the face of this earth. That's the most malleable metal we have on this earth. 24 karat gold. How do I become 24 karat gold? Those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Let the fire of His Holy Spirit take out the impurities, for impurities are not welcomed at fire. Let His Holy Spirit be led and surrender to the leading of His Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life. Well, the invitation's been given. I don't know if there's much more that I'll say. Every head bowed, every eye closed, stand to your feet. Or not necessarily in that order. You can stand to your feet and then close your eyes. And I want you falling over. As you stand to your feet, and you bow your head and you close your eyes, as Miss Melissa's playing, I think the question's been posed the Lord loves you. How much do you love the Lord? How much of the, you know, the, you might say, well, I have the Lord. I'm saved. Well, how much does the Lord have of you tonight? Are you wanting to reach to that next level? Do you want to be found faithful? You know, I've shared the verse when the Lord returns. He wondered, will I find anyone faithful? Would you be found faithful tonight? You can come before to the to the front at this time. Invitation time. Come on. If God's dealt with you about anything, maybe He wants you to come and and dedicate your life to some form of ministry. Hey, there's no reason He couldn't do that tonight. Maybe He's calling you to be a missionary. Maybe calling you to be a teacher, a preacher, a pastor. I don't know what God might be doing tonight. Maybe He's just got a hold of your heart and said, Hey, I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to go and share Jesus with others. Would you come? I'm not going to beg you. You need to do what the Holy Spirit would guide you to do. Be good to get it dealt with tonight. Then you could just enjoy the rest of the week. I wouldn't want you to go home contending with the Lord. Just come on down here and get the fight over with. Just come to the front. Talk to Him. You know, it's a step of faith. So why do I have to come forward? You don't have to. But if you come forward, it's a, it's a show of humility. It's a show of faith. I'm trusting that God... It's going to do something. And I, I desperately need him to do something in my life. If, you, if that's you tonight, once you come, there's people already all already around the altar praying. Would you come? As you're all on the altar of sacrifice laid, your heart does the spirit control. You can only have rest. You can only be blessed when you yield Him your body and soul. Would you just yield to the Lord tonight, please? I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what you need, but God knows what you need. Heavenly Father, I pray that if there's somebody tonight who just is hanging on, they're hanging on to pride or they're hanging on to indifference. They're lukewarm. God, I pray you would stir and kindle a fire under them that they couldn't stand it. I pray you they would come this evening and just say, Lord, I'm dedicating, rededicating myself to you. Lord, I pray that be someone tonight, God, that you would get a hold of. 
Lord, we all need a touch from you tonight. Thank you for what's already been said and done, Father, but now is when the work needs to be done. The message, the, the music, has just been a, a preparation of our heart, Father. Would you, would you please bring them, Lord, as you see fit? I pray that we would have people who have a tender heart. Lord, give us a church full of people with a broken and contrite spirit. Lord, let us have people who won't lift their head to heaven, but just say, Lord, forgive me, for I'm a sinner. People who would say, Lord, I'm not worthy, but I'm your child. Lord, I'm in your, made in your image, God, and I've been foreordained that I might walk in those good works that you've, that you've established in my life. Lord, help me to do that. God, help me. Would you come? There's still some praying. Now's your chance. Won't you come tonight? Why would you tarry when Jesus is calling? Calling to you and to me. Come home. You sin, if you're a, whether you're a sinner, we're all sinners. But if you're a child of God, come. Come home. Come and talk to God tonight. Do you want revival? Do you just want more of the same? Do you want to be changed? Do you want to be a better witness? Do you want to live a more holy life? What do you want tonight? What is God, through His Holy Spirit, telling you that you need tonight? Don't, don't resist the Spirit. So many people quench the Spirit of God. Don't do that tonight. Don't quench the Spirit. The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Just say, God, put away that flesh. Put it, and put away that stony heart with me. Give me a heart of flesh. It won't tarry much longer if, you, if you've... If you feel you should come and you haven't come, now's your chance. We've learned about the love of God tonight. The love of God constrains us. Is God's love constraining you that you might walk out on faith and, and live for Him? Is there something you're holding on to that's more precious to you than God? Let it go tonight. Come as you're all on the altar, the sacrifice laid. Come and lay it down. Lay your burdens at His feet. Lay your, your pain at His feet. If there be any that you have ought against, go and, and go and make it right with your brother and then come back and give your, give your offering. Bring your alms. Whatever you need to do, just do it. Now's your chance. Let's, let's just pray. It may be if you're saying, I don't, I don't need to come forward tonight. Well, would you pray for those that are coming, that have been down here praying for some time, that, that whatever it is they need. Maybe they just want, they want more. They're not satisfied with the status quo. They're not satisfied with just, just the crumbs from the Father's table. But they want to, they want to sit with the Lord. They want to, they want to sit at the table of the Lord. They want to feast. I pray that whatever it is that you, that our people, Father, would pray for these. Heavenly Father, help these. You know each and every need. You know the, the beginning from the end, God. You know the pain. You know the hurt. God, please grant them whatever it is that they need. God, please do a work in our people. God, I, I can't do it. I'm just the messenger. Brother Eric can't do it. Miss Melissa, as beautiful as the, the the worship time was, Lord, she can't she can't do it, Lord. If there's people who have their arms crossed and say, Well, just bless me if you can, Lord, that's the wrong attitude. Would you Lord help those people? God, like I said, give them a tender heart. Lord, help us to love you more and above everything else, God, please. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Brother Eric, for Miss Brooklyn, for the Crutchfields. Thank you for all the ones that came and supported them, their friends. What a blessing it was to have them tonight.
God, thank you for that you've met with us tonight. And God, we desperately Make need you to meet with us, not just tonight, but when we go to bed tonight, Lord, when we let rise our head in the morning, when we go along the way, Lord, help us to have a closer walk with you. God, please help us this week. Help everything that's done to glorify and magnify you. That your praise would be upon our lips, Lord, this week. And you would do a mighty, mighty work in this church and among the people of this church and the hearts of the people of this church. God, please, Father, please. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. to him. things in all scripture Jesus is the most desperate time of his his ministry of his life he knows what's coming and he asked them to come with him and pray and stay just stay awake and pray he went off by himself to pray but he asked them to pray he came back and said could you not just stay awake a little while Can we not just pray a little while? Can we not? Do we have have time for God? That He has all the time for us. He, He never gets weary of us reaching out and calling to Him. Let us never be weary or ever grow tired of talking to our Heavenly Father. God is so good. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for just, thank you Lord for a wonderful evening been a good evening in the house of the Lord, hasn't it? It's been very good. Well, we're going to be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Be here with bells on, as they say. Come early, invite a friend, invite two friends, 
Invite the whole neighborhood. <laughs> Invite all your Facebook friends. Share the video from tonight or this morning with them. Both, please. Encourage them. Tell them, hey, if they need somewhere to go worship, that this will be a good place to come this week. Tell them, doesn't matter what they got going on, doesn't matter if it's a, you know, it, it's not as important as meeting with God. Amen. Let's go to the Lord and we'll pray. As we pray, we'll be dismissed. I'm going to ask Brother Eric and his family if they would um, kind of be our, since they're our guests tonight, if they'd make their way to maybe to one of the exits there so people can greet you, brother. And um, I, I'm very thankful for Brother Eric. And um, I think it should challenge all of us to hide God's word in our heart. Thy word have I hidden in my, in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And um, Brother Eric has certainly done that. And, and he's done that with his children. What a challenge for all of us to raise our children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Hey, try to have a family worship time this week. It's not just about revival in the, in the, in the house or in the tent or wherever. But all through the week, why don't you just have a time of family worship? I want you to just open up the word this week with your children, with your family. And praise God. Open up the hymn book. Sing a song. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anything else that needs to be said for tomorrow? Anything anybody knows about? 7 o'clock. We'll have the believers with us for our music. We'll have Brother Danny Allen with us. We've got different musicians nearly every night, but we've got Brother Danny with us Monday through Wednesday and then Brother Sean Thursday through Saturday. So please come if you absolutely, it, it, as long as, you know, there's not just something crazy going on. Try to be here. and It'll be a blessing. I don't want you to miss a blessing. I'm not saying that because I'm not even preaching. I don't want you to miss a blessing. I don't want to miss a blessing, so come tomorrow night. Let's, let's just miss some player. I'm going to ask um, Brother Jason, would you just miss us, please?